Thanks for staying with us. Now, today is, I think, International Braille Day. Um, <clears throat> it celebrates the birth of Louis Braille, the inventor of the reading and writing system used by millions of blind and partially sighted people all over the globe. Thanks to this, blind students have the opportunity to be educated alongside their peers, as well as read for pleasure just as easily as any seen person can. So happy Braille World Day. Braille Day. I think that Braille writing is maybe one of the biggest, would I say invention, that the world is not giving enough credit to. Because imagine someone who is so thoughtful enough to create an avenue for blind people to be able to read, which means if they can read, that means they wouldn't just be the incapacitated or a liability to, to the society, which means that they can get educated and make get their own job. business, get a job, get a source of livelihood, run a family, be an addition to the society. So I think we do. Brill needs his flowers. I'm telling you, I was going to say to you, remember that where we were working, when we were at TVC, there, mm -hmm. there used to be a, a guy that was visually impaired that would come to read the news, right? That is true. Yeah, he was visually impaired, right. but, you know, he would read the news. You, like, literally, if they don't tell you that this guy cannot see, you would never you know. Would never know. Would and never that is know. because, all thanks to the Braille, yeah. they're able to earn a decent income. We're talking mm -hmm. um, a, a, a newscaster, there's Cobams, there's so many yes, people, Cobams I too. mean, that have just been able to, to live their lives as regular people just because some invention, you know, brought, you know... Yeah give them that access to be able to do that. So but really, that Braille writing remains the biggest mystery of the world. If I was even near, I don't <laughs> like, know how they say they do well, how, how are you making sense out of a couple of dots that I'm telling doesn't you, even look no, like ma, Have you ever figures? tried to ever... Because I have tried, I have attempted... You know the sign language, I understand it. You know, I used to... Yeah. Funny enough, when I was growing up, I, I used to learn, I used to communicate because we had a lot of deaf and dumb people that mm -hmm. used to live around in one you. house around. So because of that, I learned the sign language. I would tell mm -hmm. them, I love you. I, oh, but I've forgotten all of them. But with the Braille, I, um, I attempted it one day. Where I said, did you start from? I don't understand <laughs> it. <laughs> but with, no, what, what, what are, what's your experience with the Braille? I've not uh, had the, an experience personally, like using it myself. But I have seen it being used, and I was fascinated it was like wow one of those you know mysteries like you rightly called it and um i really am excited that we have the opportunity to celebrate um the one who invented this because it it is a beautiful chance at a normal life and um being able to do, i mean when you look at all the names that we've called like people like Cobams, you know being able to create phenomenal achievements in their lives, then it yeah. just tells you that really there's no limitation to life. The limitation that you find is only the one that you have accepted in your mind. And um, for somebody to be able to have thought about it, I mean, I've seen them read it, you know, their hands going on the, the, the Braille itself and they're just reading. It's just really amazing. And it also helps you to be grateful for what you have because a lot of times you take for granted that we see and we have access to freely do a lot of things. But this one is about extra effort mm -hmm. to be able to do some of those things. It's about intentionality and being deliberate. And you find out that in that state of mind, you can actually achieve a lot. So, Kudos to the inventor, and um, I continue to be fascinated, honestly. When I see it done, it's like, wow, you know, Absolutely. and you want to just put yourself in their shoes. It's not something that you can actually, if you're not there, you can't really understand what it feels like. So it, it's just it's just a beautiful miracle in my Absolutely. perspective. Absolutely. All right, so speaking about, uh, let's start with you, Norma. What did you find for us in today's news? All right. So there was an earthquake. I'm not sure if we knew about that, but there was an earthquake um, on Monday mm -hmm. and um, in Japan. And the earthquake, I mean, it was really terrible. But the interesting thing that I found in the news today was the fact that a woman who was in... 
Oh wow, she was in her eighties and she was the... found. That. After the seventy-two hour window, you know, in the rubble, the house that she was living in was uh, collapsed, and um, they were almost giving up about finding people. But she was one of the people that has been found. Over, I think, about one hundred and fifty people have been found so far. And um, I'm just excited that after three days, this woman was still alive and they were able to pull her out of the rubble. And they're still looking for a lot of people, even though the 72 hour window has closed officially. But it's just such a grateful thing to begin. The, imagine beginning the year, 1st of January, uh, with an earthquake and being buried under that for three days. Hmm. So I'm just so grateful about that. That's a miracle. I'm I don't know. I mean, 80 years and having survived all that. The, 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 uh, you know when they say it is not your time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You would imagine because that. somebody, somebody that is in their 60s can just sneeze, and because of the sneeze, the way the thing entered the brain somehow. But it's not her time. <laughs> it's not her time. After three days hidden under the rubble, they were able to find her. I think that, that that's is, a miracle. That is a miracle. Absolutely. Exactly. How about you, um, Sanzi? What did you find for us in today? So news? what I found in the news, apparently it hasn't been the best season for Nigerian leadership, government, the manufacturers, literally business owners in Nigeria. Uh, recently, the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria has blamed the current business environment for the continued exit of multinational companies, including the latest departure of one of the major syringe producing manufacturing companies in Nigeria that was based at Akwaibom. And they were, they were inaugurated by Vice President, former Vice President Oshibanjo, as at 2000, 2017. Mm -hmm. And right now, because of how unfriendly the business world or the business industry in Nigeria has been. They have officially decided, you know what, we're pulling out. And the reason I'm taking this story is it's not just them. There are so many other uh, multinationals, which I give the multinationals, they're the ones who bring revenue and extra employment. Yeah, so there's, there's for, a foreign for, direct investment e exactly. into the country. So, yeah. so we, we, we sort of need them to help boost the economy. So these people, they are pulling out, and I mean, I can't exactly call the brand names, but there are so many of them. There is this popular one that is known for producing sanitary pads for women. There is this one that produces toothpaste. Um, there is one that is known for the, the the headache medication that the average Nigerian just goes to. So these are very, and there is even in oil and gas, there is one of the major oil dealers that has also pulled out, you know, and this all happened between 2000 and 2023 into 2024. And according to reports, more people are looking at exiting. And so President, President Tinubu has been in power for like seven months and he's like, he just triggered this exit. So we're sort of at a place where we're thinking, what is the way forward, you know? Because even some Nigerian companies, this one is not multinational, again, some production companies that were founded in Nigeria, in Ondo State, in Ogun State, some of them have moved on to start production in Ghana. So now they're importing or exporting, what's the word? <laughs> <laughs> they, they have now become, ex, they import into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that's, it's, it's, not, it's not encouraging. And also looking at the fact that each time President Tinubu makes his speech, the New Year's speech, he was saying, oh, Nigeria is ready and open for business. And it's like you have a different script. But the reality on ground, they say something completely different. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, I mean, major supermarkets shut down also last year. They sold mm. off and, you know, they, they exited the country. It's a tough place to be. And that's why, you know, when I saw that video of the young girl, when she was talking about it, I thought it was worth for us to have that conversation, you know, as mm. we, we discuss more tonight. But I just wanted to quickly take my story. I don't know whether to laugh or to, if they can find my video. You know, there's a young boy that was going to be sentenced. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he appealed for bail and he wasn't granted bail. Oh, more. <laughs> I, yeah, that's the video. <laughs> it is the diving. So 
So this guy, right, um, his name is, what's that his name again? Diobra Redden. He violently assaulted the George Mary Halters in a Clark con a County District courtroom. Now, this footage, you know, what really stood out for me was the, you know, the way he, he dived in, it's like he had springs, yeah. spring shoes, because the way he lifted himself, right, like a mantis mm -hmm. and flew to where the judge was. In fact, they said one of the court um, marshals sustained a dislocated shoulder. There was one that had a, a deep cut in the head that was gushing out blood, just, you know, because they were trying to restrain the guy. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he had asked for a, I don't know what his offense was, but he had asked for a bail and, you know, he wasn't denied. granted bail. He was denied bail. Oh, more. When I saw this video, I said, Che. <laughs> so I saw it was a comment, it was a comment session for me. Somebody said that where was this guy in our, in our, in our, in our, in our pre, 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 um, presidential tribunal? But Lizzo just sees you him. Ah, he's court going to again. jail. So, yeah, he, this time he won't go to jail. He's going to jail. Because I, I hear that this kind of assault, right? Mm. I think there's a. Is it a six years or how many years sentence? It's a jail. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a jail. It's a, it's a criminal offense. I don't wonder. So it's like the guy has just resorted. Yeah. I don't say, I don't say, he say, all oh, die and die. I don't say they die, but you go collect. Because the way he, he sprang to the, ah, yeah. no, 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 no. And it's not a for, I think, Nigeria's today. Like, if you do any, you go you collect. collect. <laughs> yes, I say this year, no grief for anybody. It's like, there, there was, an unknown community meeting that happened because <laughs> all over the country it is the same slide. Yes, so. <laughs> it's if you do anyhow, you go collect. No, collect no, no grief for anybody. For anybody. Ah! For anybody. No, but this was too much. It was yeah, too much. I think the guy was high or drunk because I don't even understand. It is even the way he lifted himself. You know how, you know, do you know what it means for you to that those tables are quite high. He sprang up he like this. Very athletic or hey. very frustrated. One of the guy, no, I think it was the anger and the frustration that lifted him. I don't him. think he would be on drugs or he would be drunk or high hey. because you would not be allowed to come to court hey. if, you're, if you're like that. But he they said, said that going forward, shall they have to put in a lot of measures because now nobody knew that something like this could happen. happen. Now that they know. It means that they probably maybe put a barricade or something because to shield the judge. It yeah. is very scary. scary. Uno, my, you wanted to say something. Yeah, for, I think for me, the sad thing that it, that I even realize is that he is even black. Yeah. So we continue to, you know, refine and define yes. ourselves as um, black people and them in, uh, in our behavior. You say I've come again, Madam Polish coach, but I I don't know. It just is. It's just very is happening to 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 realize that we continue to be in the news for the wrong reasons mm. and um, it's just very sad for me absolutely all right so we'll take a break now when we come back from that break i want us to discuss the looming um food scarcity and the alleged um theft for what's it called our mineral resources especially up north stay with us we'll be right back